We did one on LSD, psychedelics. Mm. It was my first time ever doing a story on psychedelics. Mm. It's a great episode. Um, we basically spent months and months trying to get uh, an interview with an LSD chemist. There's only a few of them out there. So yeah, there's say, only like five or six yeah. in the whole country, which is I crazy. I know. I, I just know. found that out recently. Yeah. It's really, really hard, and we kept hearing about these hermit hermit chemists who live out in the mm. forests and are hidden, and I mean, we interviewed so many people and talked to so many people to try to ac get access to, and I, and in, in the end, it was we, we, we got access to a chemist who is no longer a chemist, but it was one of the most powerful interviews we so ever did. So he quit after you interviewed him? <laughs> no, he got, he got in trouble. He was oh. an LSU chemist, and he did time in prison, basically, uh, in the U.S. Okay. Mm. And he's, but he's American, and he's now living in Montana. And he's now he actually he lives out of school bus in Montana. Mm. And it was a really powerful interview because, you know, we, I spent so much time reporting on drugs and talking to people who do it because of the money. And with psychedelics, we've filmed a lot of people involved in the psychedelics business selling mushrooms and LSD, and not one single one of them were doing it be, was doing it because of the money. But they all told us how they were doing it because of the power of the drug and how LSD has changed them and transformed them. And they really believe in the power of the drug in terms of sort of liberating and raising consciousness mm -hmm. in the world. And he was one of them. So here I was finally in front of a chemist who spent, you know, years of his life making LSD. And then uh, and he started crying, like bawling and talking about how when I asked him, do you think, do you know other active chemists out there? And he told me, look, I do, but I would never give you that name because I would take away from them what has been taken away from me. And he starts bawling, talking about what LSD made, meant for him, what making LSD meant for him, and how he was robbed of his life's meaning. Mm. It's really incredible. I was not expecting it. So he felt like his life's meaning was to provide it. To provide it and to allow people to experience what he experienced at a young age. Did you have any preconceived notions when you went into that that were dissolved? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Again, I think the financial component. Um, most people that are involved in drug trafficking or ma the making of drugs do it because of money. Um, and, you know, I don't use drugs, never have, um, because I'm afraid of losing control. Uh, I ha I've tried weed, of course. I tried hash. Oh, one of the episodes we have for the upcoming season is actually about hash because it's the first drug I tried when I was growing up in yeah. Portugal. Um, it's but decriminalized in Portugal. It's decriminalized. Right? Portugal has an amazing success so yes. when it comes to drugs. It's pretty well, cool. that's part of the problem with illegality, right? When things are illegal, only mm -hmm. criminals are selling them, and then law-abiding people you that's know, right. are prohibited from taking them. Mm -hmm. That's right. Which is, it's, you know, Terrence McKenna once famously said that freedom uh, includes a freedom to explore your own consciousness. Mm -hmm. And if you deny people that, you're, you're denying them mm -hmm. a basic human right. Yeah. I think he's right. Yeah. I mean, one of the guys, the people we interviewed was a former um, um, a former military suffering from PTSD, a young mm. kid who had been in uh, Afghanistan, I believe. Yes, Afghanistan. And he was part of the bomb sniffing crew that goes uh, looking for IEDs. And the car that he was in actually... Uh, there was an IED that exploded under him, but it was all protected, so nothing happened to him. He suffered a concussion and was out for a few minutes and then was rescued, but there was still incoming shooting coming at him. It was like a whole situation, and he was suffering from PTSD. And he was told us he was incapable, and he tried everything, all the medication that that uh, was available for him by the traditional medical community, and uh, nothing was working. And he says he was having trouble waking up in the morning. He was suffering, again, from PTSD. And then he tried LSD, and it changed, he says, it's completely changed his life. Um, and he started doing LSD through with a therapist, with somebody that sort of a shame, shaman, a shaman, I guess, a yeah. shaman who like, helps him. And we filmed one of his first sessions with a person. Mm. Um, he had done it before, but was one of the first sort of guided sessions. And uh, it was fascinating to see. Um, and he's, yeah, he's now in school and... Uh, I'm not sure if his life is all perfectly fine, but he's doing much better, according to him. Well, whose life is perfectly fine? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's <laughs> exactly, life. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, but that is uh, one of the best therapeutic uses of it. And mm -hmm. Did you speak to anyone at MAPS? We did. 
Yeah. Actually, up in Canada, too. We spent time in Vancouver as well. Um, it's big there. We spent time with some people who are using it as therapy. Um, and it's, yeah, I, I, it was, again, as somebody who hasn't done a lot of work with psychedelics, it was really, really incredible. And I have since microdosed <laughs> on mushrooms, and uh, and I, I really like it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> I'm a fan. To me, it does what I think I thought people tell you weed does, which is it makes you sort of relax and laugh. Uh, mm-hmm. That's what microdosing does. <laughs> oh, microdosing does that way better than weed. Right. Because weed, for some people, it gives you that paranoia mm-hmm. that they don't like at all. Yeah, that's what happens to me. I, yeah. become, I think it's if you are more like me, who want to always be in control, mm-hmm. uh, the weed doesn't work. But microdosing on mushrooms, I've tried it three times during the pandemic. And my, my position on that is that you should lose control. That, that feeling of wanting to be in control mm-hmm. is ridiculous because you don't have any control anyway. And that you really should mm-hmm. embrace this, the paranoia that comes with it. Because I think what it is is an expanding of your awareness mm-hmm. and just how insanely bizarre life is. Mm-hmm. Life is, you, you can decide that life is normal if you do the same thing every day and you have a limited amount of variability. You know, everything you drive to work the same mm-hmm. way, you work with the same people, you do the same thing, come home with the same family. And life seems seems okay. Mm-hmm. And then you get really high and you're like, oh my God, this is crazy. It's true. But for somebody who already lives in the uncomfortable side of life mm. constantly for my work, uh, I'm always in places that usually people would, would make them feel out of control. Sure. Do you know what I mean? That's your psychedelic Th- experience. That is my psychedelic experience. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I don't need another one. <laughs> 